right. All right. What is up, Wake? How we feel tonight? Let's go. Let's go. Guys, I want you to know, I am beyond excited to be here with y'all tonight, and we're going to have a ton of fun, okay? But to start off, to start off, before we go any further, I want you to know, I'm used to preaching to kids, all right? Not students. So we might be combining some elementary school style engagement with some high school ideas, okay? So be ready for that. So to be ready for that, I want you to repeat after me on the count of three, senioritis. Ready? One, two, three. Senioritis. Oh, yeah. We're ready. This is going to be fun. Okay. If we've never met, my name is Carson Knopf. Some call me Carson. Some call me Knopf. Some call me Knopf Waffle. Even recently, I've heard Carsey K. <laughs> 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 I don't know how I feel about that one, but uh, you can choose which one you like best. It's your call. I don't know. I can't yell at you. All right, now, I'm a senior at Creekview High School, okay? Like claps, like claps. Now, I want you to know, for all you not, uh, excuse me, Creekview people, I've heard all the jokes about Creekview. Every single one. There's no original ones because there's only two because you guys are unoriginal, okay? But in their defense, we're not that bad, okay? We might have more camo than all of your schools combined, but we're not that bad, okay? All right, a little bit more about myself. I'm a sibling. I'm part of a family of four. Together, we are, get ready for this, Kyle, Carson, Carly, and Cooper. That's right, major alliteration. Let's say it again, Kyle, Carson, Carly, and Cooper. And now, they all play sports. They're all great. They all, they're all doing their little athlete thing, whatever that is. I don't go to their games. And... <laughs> And all these parents, they always walk up to me like, why don't you play sports? Why don't you play basketball? You're so tall. Why aren't you like your siblings? And to that I say, don't put me in a box. I'm a peacock. You got to let me fly. And here is a video of me flying. Oh. Oh. That's right. I... I am a star pole vaulter. If you don't know what that is, it's a video we just want. Actually, let's just roll that again. It's just too good to not see twice. Wow. Can I just, can we get a big wow in the room? Wow. I don't know about y'all, but I feel the Holy Spirit moving. Like, I feel like I don't have to say anything else. Like, we can just be like, that's my earbud, and then we walk out. No. But guess what? It's not the end, okay? Not yet. <laughs> Comes later. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in all seriousness, I want to talk to y'all about my story tonight. And for the longest time, I didn't think my story was worth telling. I thought my life, my faith, and my story was just plain boring. There were many times as I wrote this message, I shut my laptop shut. Close. Thinking my story wasn't worth being told, or my story isn't as, in, as impactful as the other people who have shared their stories already. But who am I to say that the author of salvation has written a boring story? The God who put the stars in the skies made a story. He's like, it's just all right. It's fine. It's okay. No. God has written a story for my life. And he has written a story for each and every one of you. No matter how old you are, how young you are, no matter how seasoned you are to the faith or how new you are, God has a story for all of us. And that story is that we are dead in our sin. But thanks to God and his good grace, we are raised to life in Christ Jesus. We all have a story. Never forget that. My story starts off in a Christian home. I grew up Christian, I went to church every single Sunday, and I hated it, all right? I did not see the point of taking my one day off, my one day off, to dress up in uncomfortable clothes, to go to church where I didn't know anyone. Do you know how early I had to wake up for church? Like, before 10. It's ridiculous, all right? <sighs> Getting heated, all right? <laughs> and I wasn't a fan especially because I didn't like the church we were going to. I... I didn't have any friends, I didn't have a connections, and thankfully my parents saw that. And so we church hopped for a bit, we're like, where do we go, where do we go? And finally we landed here, at Stone Creek. 
And at Stone Creek, I, I liked it a little bit more. I was like, okay, I know some people here. Okay, I can get plugged in. But I still was a little bit bored with this whole faith thing. I didn't see what the big whoop was about. It just seemed like people gathering in a room with fancy clothes, hear some music, hear someone speak, and then leave not changed. Why was this God guy so important, and why did I need to dedicate my life to him? It, it just didn't make sense to me. Even though it didn't make sense, I was still involved with church a lot, including retreats. The first retreat I ever went on was the Escape 2013. I was new to this whole God thing, and remember, I hated the church at this point. But it was here that for the first time, I realized that going to church, it could be a little fun. Like we, could, we could get a little rowdy, we can dance a little, all right, it's a little fun. And maybe this Jesus guy was worth knowing. And so that, that's kind of like laid, laid a little play. I'm like, okay, let's see, let's see what goes this, where this goes. And that leads me to the next retreat, Pause 2013. At this retreat, they talked about how in life we have a choice. You can build your life on the rock, which is God, or the sand, which is our plans without God. Joey talked about how in life storms will come and will hit our houses. And what happens next depends on the foundation we have built, on our, li- built our lives on. Do we choose the rock, which will never move, or the sand, which is our own plans that might seem better in the moment? Do we choose God? Do we choose ourselves? In that moment, I realized I choose God. I didn't want to keep living the life that was built on unstable ground. God is my rock that will never move. I learned that when my foundation is stable, my world doesn't have to be. So I said, God, I'm in. I'm yours now and for, until forever. Your will be done, not mine. I'm following you till the end. And things immediately started happening. And my faith was about to be tested, stretched, and grown like never before. In the months following that pause, a friend of mine in our small group's brother tragically committed suicide. This isn't something anyone should have to deal with, much less 13-year-olds. So walking with him, especially on the Escape 2014, was hard. It was a very, very difficult thing. But it bonded us together as a small group like never before. Through this and a few other events that Escape, that year taught me that community is important. I learned that we all need friends in our lives to pick us up when we're down and say, hey, I'm right here beside you. We need friends that say, hey, even when the night gets dark, I'm sticking out with you till we see the lights. I'm with you to the end of the line, and that's a promise. And to all the friends that have kept that promise, thank you. And to everyone else who's kept that promise to other friends, thank you. You're changing so many lives around you, even if you don't know it or you don't hear it. Even though I learned that community was important, it didn't mean I instantly had it. During my freshman year, I felt completely alone. My school friends made me feel like my only purpose in life was to be the punchline of a joke. And I started having these thoughts, and these feelings I, I, I couldn't process. I would notice these thoughts and feelings were not normal, and I realized it wasn't just like a bad day kind of thing. It was frequent. I realized that I struggled with some form of mental illness. I felt alone and that everyone was against me or didn't care what happened to me. It let me cling on to my friends, sometimes too much, and say things late at night that scared them a lot. I was hurting and I kept turning to friends in this situation. But the truth is, even though my friends are great, they weren't great enough to be my savior. They couldn't give me a magic potion to fix everything. They couldn't perform a miracle. And during this time of hurting, I didn't go with a person that could be perform a miracle. Because the truth is, friends make terrible saviors. People cannot bring the peace of God. Friends don't bring fulfillment that you can only find in Jesus. And because I kept turning to friends instead of God, life and things got worse. But then... God moved when I wasn't looking. Things started looking up when I started working at Camp Kidzu. As a counselor, I saw God's love and God's grace like never before. I saw what God meant by childlike faith, and it changed my life. It was during that summer I felt the calling to be a kids pastor. And I am proud to say that I am pursuing that, college and col- that calling in college. Thank you. 
And one day, one day, I am going to make a killer children's pastor, and we're going to have the time of our lives. You're all invited to my first service. Don't worry. I'll send out the invite. All right? But there I learned that I really want to pour into the future generation. And it's all because of Camp Kids Zoom. Camp helped me a lot with my mental health and gave me complete joy because I was serving God's kingdom every day and working with some of the greatest people out there. But even, but even that high faded. And the house that I built on camp crumbled and I was left in ruins once again. Because even though camp was about God, it still wasn't God. So my house crumbled. You see, even if we are building our foundation on godly things, if Jesus isn't the only one we look to, our house is going to crumble every single time. High school was a time full of highs and lows. But nothing major happened until junior year. I was feeling down again and worse off than normal. I didn't like the way I looked. I struggled with self-image. And I didn't like the way my faith was with God either. I felt s stuck in a cycle. Some days I would feel fine. And then some days I felt anxiety building. And then darker days I would feel complete emptiness. In those moments, friends would come cheer me up. And it would be a temporary fix until the cycle started over and over and over again. That was the way things worked for a long time. Until these two awesome friends used some tough love and looked me in the eyes and told me that I had the power to break this cycle. That God had given me every tool to break this cycle once and for all. Not delay, not distract, but destroy. They told me that it was time to put some positive action behind the feelings that I've been struggling with. So I took action. I lost a bunch of weight. Became a more positive person, stopped complaining, maybe some of you guys need to do that, and learned new things about God. That wasn't planned, I'm sorry, I just had to like shoot that shot. All right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I want to challenge you guys with something. Put your faith into action. Faith is not meant to be passive, bystander type of thing. It is meant to be active. We need to pursue God and learn more about him in, in order to grow. It won't automatically happen. Take the time to pursue Jesus and make change. I like to say it this way. Come to him as you are, but don't be okay staying that way. Things were looking up, except one area of my life. During that time, I felt unworthy as a speaker. I speak a lot in our kids', envi our kids environment and at Camp Kids who all the time. I felt like God looked at me and he just saw a bad communicator. Then, this most recent escape, I heard a reminder that we all need to hear. I was reminded that when God looks at me, he doesn't see bad communicator. He doesn't see failure or all my past sins. In fact, he doesn't even see servants. Instead, when he looks at me, he sees son. He sees forgiven and he sees worthy of his son's life. And the same goes for every single person in this room. When God looks at you, he sees the same thing. He sees son and daughter. He sees chosen and worthy. He doesn't see your past mistakes. He only sees grace and all that you can be. Because when I see, because when I looked in the mirror last year, I saw a terrible speaker. And that lie, I wasn't good enough to serve God or spread his word, consumed me. But through it, he has proved that the enemy has said those things to make me lose confidence. It wasn't the voice of God. God says to me, take heart, for I know who you are and what you can do. God believes that I can do great things. Whatever that, and he believes the same thing for you. Take heart, you can do great things. Whatever that may be, you have potential to do so so much. So stop listening to the lies. Stop following the way of doubt and start following the way of confidence and joy. Stop letting death hold you and start living in the life Jesus has brought. And not just ordinary life, but abundant life. God will redeem the lies you've been believing and will show you your true purpose. God redeemed the lie that I wasn't good enough to speak about him on stage by creating an opportunity to tell all of you guys my story. He has a plan for your life. You just need to trust him. Life kept moving, and this year, 2019 rolled around. And I started off the year with a lot of thinking 
and a lot of reflection. It was my last year of high school and the year I would be starting college. I thought about how far I'd come, but when I really thought about it, I realized I wasn't all the way there. That even though I've come a long way and was doing so much better than freshman year, I stopped short of what God really had for me. And I was only living in half the life I could have been. I was living in a half-finished house built by God. Yeah, halfway built by God is great, but it could be so much greater. When I really thought about it, I was only living a half measure of my joy. A half measure of my stability and a half measure of my faith. Now, you might be thinking a half measure is better than nothing, but what's halfway finishing a race? Losing. What's a halfway done test? Failed. What's, a ha- what's undercooked? Salmonella. <laughs> so I made a New Year's resolution. So I made a New Year's resolution. No more half measures. I realized I was giving only half of my best to God into my life. I, wasn't, I realized I wasn't living life to the fullest. I wasn't living faith to the fullest. Instead, I was living only half of the life I really could have been. But when I fully, fully surrendered to God and let him be in control, I could be complete. So I said, enough is enough. No more. When I've had hard days or go through a hard season, I don't just give up and turn on chasing cars. I don't just run to my friends and say, save me, save me. I did this because I thought community and friendship was the answer to everything. But that is not the case when you put community and friendship over Jesus. Because guess what? Friends can't do what Jesus did on the cross. Friends can't save me and I can't save myself. My best work is nothing compared to what God has in store for me. And the whole time, the whole time, through everything, through every trial and circumstance, he's watched me crawl around only as half of the person I could have been. I thought that God was nowhere to be found. But that entire time he was yelling, I'm right here. I'm right beside you. Come to me. Don't forget about me. Turn to me. I am your peace. I realize that my whole life, I've been searching for comfort and for attention. I was looking for friends to coddle me and tell me it'll be okay. I was expecting camp to give me a high on life that I could just push forth just a little bit longer. I was looking for all these things to comfort me, but really, I should have been looking for peace. What I learned, what God has shown me, is that peace comes from the inside. Comfort comes from the outside. I was looking f- for comfort from outside experiences where I really need peace from God who's inside me. I was looking for attention in all my friends on the stage, but I realized that Jesus gave me the, all the attention I'll ever need on the cross. So I said, God, I rely on you now. God, you are the Prince of Peace. I need you in my life or else I'm going to be half the person you created me to be. And guess what? God came through. Just like he always does, because he is a great God who loves with words cannot describe. Me, with all my sins and all my mistakes, all the times I ran to anything but God, he stood there waiting and goes, he'll get it soon. And when he does, we can celebrate together. And that's my story. But a lot of the time with these messages, I hear people go, I get nothing out of that. It's just someone's story. So for those people, here are five things I learned in high school that I want to share with you. First thing, pray and read your Bible. This is something we've heard from such an early age, and it's a no-brainer. But if it's a no-brainer, why don't we do it? The God of the universe gave us a way to spend time with him and know him more, to show just how much he loves us. So let's take advantage of that. If you don't have a Bible or don't know how to pray, I want you to go find your small group leader immediately and learn how to pray and get a Bible. (sighs) Praying and reading your Bible will change your life from the way you view God, view yourself, and just the way you live your life. I know from personal experience. See, the summer going into freshman year, I made a decision that I was going to read 
the entire Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, I sat down and read all of it. It was a lot. It was a lot. And it required a lot of hard work and discipline. But it brought me so much closer to God. It provided the building blocks of my faith and my understanding of God. It taught me incredible things that have stuck with me for years, like this simple idea. If you care about it, pray about it. If something's bothering you, if something's like you just can't understand, you don't know what to do, talk to God. Talk to him. He's there for you. He has given you complete access to him. So if something's really bothering you, if you care about something, go to your heavenly father because he wants to hear you. You're not a nuisance. You're not a chore. You are loved and you're worthy and you need to go talk to him. Second, let your light shine. In Matthew 5, 16, my favorite verse, it says this. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now, that's my favorite verse for a lot of reasons. But my main reason is that word you're right there. Let your light shine. Don't shine someone else's light. Don't try and be someone else. Shine your individual lights. Because God has given you gifts and talents, and he wants you to use them. You all have lights. And I promise you, you do. It's in the Bible, which means it's true, okay? We all do, all right? And if you don't know what yours is, talk to your friends. Talk to your parents. Because I promise they know. They notice. Just like how I notice my friend's light. Vivian, I almost didn't get on this stage because you're such a good communicator. Sarah, you're one of the biggest lights I've seen at Stone Creek. Your positivity is radiating. Jake, you're a words guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three, be in community. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know it may seem, I just spent this entire message uh, bashing on having friends or talking to friends about things, but the thing is, I just swung too far. I built my life on them instead of God. But the truth is, some of you guys haven't tried at all, and you haven't talked to your friends at all. So let's me in the middle, and the middle ground is being honest. It's talking about what's going on in your life. It's saying, hey, I'm really struggling with this. It's having accountability partners to help you read your Bible, pray, and avoid that sin that just keeps coming up in your life. Be in community and be honest with each other. Which leads me to my next point. Now, best message I've ever heard at Stone Creek. This is in my next point. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Sean. Sorry, Stephen. But this one goes to Joey. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't deserve that. Okay. <laughs> and then the point is just keep walking. <laughs> There's a weird blend of humor and truth going on here. <laughs> right back now, y'all. <laughs> All right. And he taught him this simple idea, which is just keep walking. He taught that life. It's going to get hard. It's going to get rocky, but just keep walking. That at, at times, you're going to want to quit. You're going to want to say, what if I just stopped? What if I just gave up, threw in the towel, ended it all? Would anyone notice? Would anyone care? If you have not heard a single thing I have said tonight, I care. I would notice. Your friends care. And they will be broken the minute they know you're gone. Your parents would be shattered. I know life is tough. I know life is tough. But just keep walking. Because one day, you're going to just keep walking right across the stage for graduation. You're going to just keep walking and bump into the love of your life. You're going to just keep walking right down the aisle to marry the spouse of your dreams. You're going to just keep walking in victory 
and in celebration and joy. And one day, you're going to just keep walking right into heaven. And you and Jesus are going to embrace. And he's going to say, I'm so proud of you. You didn't give up. You fought the good fight. You can rest now. And finally, the last thing I have to say, y'all, the last thing us seniors love here at Wake, is treasure the moments. The great theologian Andy Bernard once said, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you actually left them. <laughs> and I'm here to, it's a kid from the office. If you're, if you're the sixth grader, it's the kid from the office. <laughs> He's not a theologian. Talk to your small group later about that. Uh, <laughs> I'm here to tell you that these are the good old days. Now, don't get me wrong, the best is yet to come. But you're going to look back and you're going to cherish your high school memories and you're going to cherish your middle school memories. So soak it up. Cherish it. Time flies by. Take every opportunity you were given. Take every moment like a blessing because guess what? That's what it is. Run into adventure. Run into the unknown. Because I promise you, Jesus is standing right next to you saying, let's run. Treasure the memories. Treasure the moments. Treasure your friendships. That means saying thank you every now and then. So to close, I have some thank yous to say. Thank you, everyone. We're at camp, aren't we? <laughs> thank you, everyone, for hearing me talk for 20-odd minutes. I really appreciate your time and hearing me speak. Thank you, seniors, for never giving up on me and always sticking by me. Love you guys. Thank you, small group, who has always walked with me through it all, including Sean and Jason. You guys are the greatest leaders of my life. I couldn't imagine high school without your guidance and your wisdom. Thank you for my family for supporting me. I'm sorry for all the half measures I've given you. Thank you, Stone Creek staff, when you saw potential in me when I didn't see in myself. And one big, huge thank you to Jesus. Because you are faithful and you are loving. And God, we have so much in store. And I can't thank you enough for that. My name is Carson Knopf. And this is my yearbook. Let's go!